So the total spent for this antique store haul came to $69.86. Now I will tell you that most, if not everything that I mentioned is for sale, will be going into a live sale. There's nothing really here that I think would generate a lot of money on eBay. So I spent $69 with the hopes that I can make that back at a live sale or possibly make even more of a profit. So I'm going to save my two favorite pieces for last. So let's jump right in. And I have my receipt here just so I remember how much I paid for each item. Now I got thrift store prices at the antique mall with the exception of a couple of things. So the first thing that I'm going to share with you all I think is really cool. It's an old car, quote unquote, lighter. It's still, it's in good shape. Nothing's wrong with the ceramic at all. Probably a Japan piece. This is a 1913 car in the shape of it. As you can see, it is pretty dusty, so I'm going to have to clean it up just a little bit. But the paint itself is in very good condition. This cost me $2, and if you are interested in that, it will be in a live sale hopefully very soon. And I won't be saying that every time I share an item, I promise. All right, so I'm going to cover up the sides of this because I don't want to get demonetized for it. Try to make it quick because it's kind of awkward the way I have it. Nope. Okay, let's do it again. Okay, so this... Okay, we're not even going to take it out of the box because we all know what that means. It's a wind-up jumping jolly... Yeah. So it is made in Hong Kong, so it's one of the older ones. Focus on that better. There we go. That's just going to go into my novelty jar. That's not... And no, I will not be taking it out of the box because it's naughty. Just the camera here. All right. Now these were... Let's see. Okay, yep, they were $1.95 and they were 20% off, so I paid a buck fifty-six for them. Alex from Chapter 2 Vintage Co. loves these, and for whatever reason where she is, she just cannot seem to find them. So I thought of her immediately when I saw these. These are these little wooden salt and pepper shakers. Uh, Thrift or Drunker Vintage Hunter collects these, and she sold a couple of them. But Alex is going to get these. I have a box of stuff that I have to get to her that I've been promising for quite a while, and I feel bad that I have yet to even send it to her. So I wanted to wait till I could get this video filmed so that way I can put these in the box along with the other things that I have for her so that way I can get them out of this house. Now this has been sitting at this particular booth for quite a while. It's one of those sailboat nautical wall pockets. Now it had been there when I bought all those other ones because it is cracked and it looks like somebody repaired it. It was $1.25 and then it was 20% off so I only paid a buck for it which I don't think is bad because you can't even see it when you hang it up on the wall. This one is gold and white which is perfectly fine with me. I like that. And it does have Japan on the back of it right there, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, it just says Japan, and then it has some numbers or something like that on the back of it, and some letters, but I can't make out what they say. But yeah, can't beat that for a dollar, right? And vintage doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, this was a really good find, and I've seen these and in other antique malls for like $12 a piece. It's one of those pepper shakers. It's kind of got like a 20s, 30s look to it. You can tell by the lid that it's pretty old. Let's see if there's any pepper in it, I can't remember. I think it might be empty. Very clean on the inside for the most part. But yeah, I only paid $2.50 for that. So I couldn't say no to that even though I don't have its mate for salt and pepper. But hey. That was still a really good find for $2.50, and I'm keeping that. This was really interesting, and I've never seen anything like it before. And I don't know how old it is, but I think it might be from the 90s. It's a Lennox key fob keychain. It was $1 half off, and 
yeah, like I said, I've never seen anything like it before. I don't know the age to it because it does have a skew on it. I don't know if this was something that was given away to an employee of Linux for working there for a year or... I don't know, this tag just isn't saying much. But I thought it was worth the shot for a buck and it comes in the original box. And if that's not worth anything, I can throw it in my keychain collection. So there, it's a win-win situation. This, I thought, would do really, really well at a live sale. It's this really cute, shabby chic, clutch purse, pin money bank. As you can see, it needs to be cleaned, and I will probably get this all cleaned up and looking pretty by the time I do the sale. This was only $3. And, yeah, I mean, the flowers are in really good condition. There's no breaks to any of them. Like I said, it does need some cleaning, because as you can see, that bottom is pretty pretty messed up, so I'll get that all cleaned up and nice before I put it in the sale. So I got this Inesco Oriole figurine. It looks like this. I think there's a mama, a papa, and a baby. There it is marked on the bottom, Inesco. This was originally $5 and it was half off, so I paid $2.50 for it. The only problem is there's a tiny little chippy whippy right there, but that could be filled in with like a grayish marker. There's, oh, there's no paint loss there. But yeah, overall, it's in really good condition. No repairs or anything. And the flower petals are all in pretty good shape for how old this is, so yeah. And this haul is from, when did I buy this stuff? Let me look on my receipt. I think this is over a month old. Yeah, I bought this stuff on June 7th, and it is now July 20th that I'm filming this. So this is a, well over a month ago. Now this was a little bit of a disappointment. I just unwrapped it. And he's got a chippy whippy back here, and I didn't even notice it. Thankfully, he was only $2. I don't know... I feel like, oh, I, I don't remember, I feel like this may have been something that you got in laundry detergent or you got in cereal or something back in the day. I think this is probably from the 30s. There are tons of these out there, so they're not worth a ton of money. But I've kind of wanted one and wanted to put one in a sale just to see if anybody would be interested despite that little chippy whippy back there. If you wanted to display it with all of your Scotty Dog stuff... It would look great if you wanted to use it for an actual creamer for your cereal or for your coffee in the morning. That would be great, too. And he's not going to be too much because they're just not worth a ton of money. Now, you all know, a while back, shortly when we moved up to where we live now, I scored a whole bunch of Temporama from the, I think, Temporama was released in 1961, and they had another mug there. They had two of them, and I was going to get the other one, but it's got a big old crack in it, so I was like, nope, I'm not going to do that. So I got this mug for a dollar, so I was really, really happy with that. Again, because I've had this stuff for so long, I kind of forgot about the conditions of some of the pieces. This is no exception. This is a Pyrex 0.8 ounce quartz, um, I think this is a casserole. I got a little excited when I saw that because usually Pyrex is really expensive at the antique malls or people just try to charge an arm and a leg. The flea market we went to, or that I went to this past weekend, yesterday actually, because today's Monday that I'm filming this, the guy had the air balloon ones that, you know, the ones that are um, real nifty vintages theme for his channel. And he wanted, I think, like $225 for them, and they were sitting on a tarp. Not to banter about flea market prices, but presentation's everything. If you want $100, $200 for something, display it nicely. Don't have it sitting on a tarp. That's just me. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. If they were displayed nicely and, you know, nested together in you know, with like paper towels to protect them, I'd say, yeah, maybe you could ask that, but when they're sitting out on a tarp, no. Anyway, back to this. I took some barkeeper's friend to it, and I couldn't get this baked on gunk off. Now, this isn't perfect. I mean, there's definitely 
places where the paint has come off, as you can see right here on the bottom. I only paid $5 for it, which is a very good price. This, I don't know what I'm going to ask for. There's no cracks or chips. It's just there's baked on gunk that I can't get off, and I don't want to attempt to do it any more than I already have with fear of taking the paint off. So, yeah, that was a good score, I thought, for 5 bucks. Oh, let me just show this. So this was really, really cool, this black and gold bull. There's no markings on him to say where he was made, but I'm thinking he's probably an import piece, probably from Japan at some point in time during the 50s and 60s. He was only $2. He almost looks like the bull that I bought that was red a while ago. And yeah, he's definitely mid-century. And I love him. So I think I'm going to be keeping him. And if I don't, you guys know where he's going to go. Alright, last item before we get into my two favorite pieces is this. I mean, look at the color of this face. Let me adjust my camera here. Look at that. If that doesn't scream mid-century, I don't know what does. I've seen this flower before, but I can't for the life of me remember what it's called. I think this grows near like a pond or a lake. But yeah, anyway, I think I paid $3.20 for this. Let me look. Yep, I paid $3.20 for this planter. On the bottom, it just says, warranted with 22 karat gold. It has USA. And it looks like somebody wrote Xmas on the bottom, and it either says 1998 or 1948. It kind of looks like a 4, but then again, it also looks like an, a 9. So somebody could have had this for years or stumbled upon it at an antique shop at one time and then gave it as a gift in the late 90s. It says from, and then I can't read the rest of that. But yeah, super nice piece of mid-century pottery, or like a ceramic piece. Could be a planter, or if you have paintbrushes, you could put paintbrushes in it too. Possibilities are endless with all these planters, quote unquote. So now that you guys have seen the vast majority of my haul, let's go ahead and we will conclude this video with my two favorite finds from this trip to the antique mall. Okay, so this is the first of the two of my favorite pieces that I picked up at the antique mall. This is a hand-painted ceramic piece from 1959. It was done by the, let's see, USA PA Core 1959. There's a tag on the inside. I wonder if it'll show or not. We will see. Here we go. 1959 Palmer Pan Corp in Toledo, Ohio, USA. Now, according to my research, she was, like I mentioned before, a pan, like a ceramic piece, like, or like a hobbyist piece that you would paint back in the day, but I guess it still was made by a major corporation. And what I like about her is the fact that she is very saucy, because for 1959 to be exposing your body, this at least part of your body, your bust and everything, was very, very risque. To me, she kind of gives off the, the, what am I trying to say here? She's giving off that look of like let's say she is like she's got what a basket of flowers with her like laundry and flowers or whatever and she reminds me of one of those housewives that like she asks like timmy can you please take out the garbage or tina can you please make your bed and you know dad just comes home from work and he's exhausted and she's just been inside cleaning all day and kids are giving her a hard time and she's looking at him like I have been slaving over a hot stove all day I've been cleaning this house I've been running into town to the grocery store you better make your bed and you better do whatever else I told you to do is that face that she's giving like I told you to do something and you better do it that's the face she's giving me so I could see this being 
that, and she's also just, I like the way she's dressed, I like her hairstyle, and the fact that she's blonde, you all know I love the blonde bombshells of this era. So I thought she was super, super fun. Now originally, she was $35, the booth owner, or the vendor, was asking, or they marked it down to 30 and then she was 30% off of that. So I got her for 21 bucks. And I did some research when I got home because my signal in this mall is completely crappy. And she, they don't sell for a whole lot of money, but because I was keeping her, I didn't mind paying the $21. So yeah, I think she is just super, super fun. And she's definitely my fantasy woman. I will definitely say that. Like if, if I could find a girl that's just like her, it would make my dreams come true. All right, and the last item, quote unquote, that I would like to share with you all that were in my top finds for this haul happened to be these really awesome Starburst perfume bottles. I would date them to probably the 1950s or the 1960s, like right as we hit 1960, turn of the decade. They were originally $15.99, the booth was having 20% off, so I only spent $10.80 for both of these. I've looked them up to see if I could find where they are, like who made them, but I haven't had any luck with that, and there's no markings on the bottom. Let's get that to focus better, there we go. There's like a 187, no cracks or chips on the stoppers. I'm going to probably clean them out, and then maybe I will display them. I just love that mid-century vibe that they give off with the stars all over them. They had them marked as, like, deco perfume bottles, but I don't think that that's the case. Like I said, I absolutely fell in love with them. They had been there the last few times that I had been there, and I didn't pick them up, and then, for whatever reason, something told me to go ahead and just buy these, because they are... Super, super cool, and you know, despite the fact that they're a perfume bottle, they still are definitely fitting to the mid-century era. So yeah, that is my haul for today. I hope you all liked it. So that's all I have for you today. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to know when new videos are posted. All of the links to my social media accounts via Instagram are down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you all soon. Bye guys!